<sighs> Howdy folks, this is Big Sam. You know, lately I've had a lot of viewers ask me an interesting question. Big Sam, are Finnish Mosins higher quality? Now, the answer to this would be extremely long-winded, and there's a lot of different theories and ways you could define certain things. For instance, what is a Finnish Mosin? Now, we had did a whole video dedicated to that, and quite frankly, we could probably dedicate a whole channel just to answering that question. So, to put it simply, the way we define Finnish Mosins on this channel are Mosin Nagants used by Finland. Whether that means they traded for them, bought them, captured them, or built them themselves from sort of new parts and old parts laying around that they had. Whatever the case, any one of those we count as a Finnish Mosin. And now, maybe like me, you've always heard the phrase, Finnish Mosins are the best Mosins. But is that really the case? And what I'm going to do today is answer this in a way you may not have expected. Uh, we always think of Finnish Mosins as being the best Mosins, and I kind of want to do a few videos to talk about this a little bit. But first of all, in this video, are they higher quality? Sort of. But again, this depends on how we define higher quality, and also which guns are we referring to. For instance, generally speaking, is a Finnish M39 higher quality than a Russian 9130? Well, yes, but how do we define quality, and what are going to be our criteria for quality of one being better or worse than another? Well, again, generally speaking, when we refer to quality, we're talking about things like, uh, number one, fit and finish, uh, number two, the stocks. The stocks are a big deal with Finnish Mosins, because they've made a lot of improvements to some of them. Uh, the trigger is an interesting one. Um, what is the trigger weight? Does the trigger lend itself to allowing the gun to be shot accurately by someone who maybe isn't that experienced? There's another interesting point. We know that on most Russian guns, uh, Mosins, the answer to that one is generally no. Not at all. Uh, the triggers tend to be pretty abysmal on those guns. And Finland found this out the hard way. Uh, but another thing would be the barrels, right? Now, one thing, if, if Finland made a barrel, is it automatically higher quality than a Russian barrel? Generally speaking, yes. But again, what does that mean? Are we talking about tolerances? Are we talking about standard deviations of the bore diameter of chamber dimensions? Uh, are we talking about the the crown? Are we talking about um, accuracy criteria from the factory? Are we talking about pressure testing? Uh, again, it depends on how you define all this, but generally speaking, your Finnish Mosin barrels are going to be higher quality than the Russian equivalent. But that's not to say the Russian equivalents are bad. Um, they just had two different perspectives on things. Finland had not a lot of manpower, and so they needed their the men that they had to be very well equipped. And Russia kind of had the opposite thing. They had a lot of manpower, and they had if they had a lot of logistical problems arming them all. So if you're having to arm millions and millions of people, you're not going to focus on necessarily the same things as an as an army that is focused on quality instead of quantity. And I think that's where a lot of these, I'm going to call them misconceptions, come from, and we'll get that here in a bit, about why Finnish Mosins are in fact higher quality. See, to actually answer that, it's a lot, a lot more complicated. The cop-out answer is, well, generally speaking, yes. But I didn't make this video to give you all the cop-out answer which is generally, yes, Finnish Mosins are higher quality. Uh, instead, we're going to have a much more long-winded video talking about exceptions to this, and there are many. And this is why uh, I tend to be very cautious in saying that thing, and it's things like Finnish Mosins are the best Mosins or Finnish Mosins are higher quality. You see, both of those are, in fact, universal statements. 
Now, what is a universal statement? It's an absolute truth. And we know that only Siths deal in absolutes. So that's always a dangerous principle to rely on and to adhere to. So, given that, um, we, we have to look more at some of the exceptions to, okay, generally speaking, yes, the absolute is generally true, but it's not absolutely true. Uh, we can never really deal with Mosins in absolutes because as if you've watched a lot of our videos, you'll know that there's basically an, an exception or multiple exceptions, but usually at least one exception to every single rule that you've ever heard in regarding to Mosins. And Finnish Mosins are definitely no exception. So here today I've got, for an example, this is a Finnish M91 rifle. This particular one was made in France in 1894. We featured this one many times here on the channel. And let's say someone was to apply that universal statement, Finnish Mosins are higher quality, to this rifle. Does that work? Uh, no. <laughs> in fact, it really doesn't. Uh, so let me give you one example. So maybe you've heard of uh, the term counterboard before. That's basically when you take the, the muzzle and you kind of bore out the muzzle inside here slightly. So basically from the inside of here, there's no rifling. Uh, and that's to sort of a lazy way to get around recrowning the rifle. Or it could just be extremely, extremely worn. Now there's a specific reason probably that a lot of French Mosins are counterboard. Kind of an interesting story, but we'll dig deeper into that when we get into our Legends Never Die episode on the Chatel Road contract. But for this video, just know that this particular Mosin is in fact counterboard. Now why do I bring this up? Because being counterboard is not necessarily uh, an uncommon thing for either Finnish Mosins or Russian Mosins. It, it goes back to standards. Now, Finnish Mosins can be really weird. Remember, there's an exception to every rule. And also remember how I just said that Finnish Mosins are generally higher quality because Finland cared a lot more about the individual soldier and arming them as best they could. But there's an exception to that. Uh, the exception to that is that Finland didn't actually have that much money so they tried, and oftentimes, generally speaking, they did a pretty good job with what they had, but not every soldier had a brand new, absolutely beautiful uh, M39 with a three pound trigger. Uh, a lot of them had rifles like this that were honestly quite old and uh, had already been through several really horrible wars by the time that Finland got around to needing them. Uh, and then after that, they went through several wars in Finland. So this thing has been places, many horrible places. But uh, the fact that Finland used this gun really shows the exception to the rule, Finnish Mosins are the best Mosins. You see, I've measured this, and this rifle has to be counterboard by at least six centimeters. Now, why is that important? Well, generally speaking, six centimeters of, being, of counterboard is quite a lot. <laughs> That's not something you typically find. And the reason is because if, if you look at what we know about World War II criteria for Mosins, uh, the main artillery directorate of the Soviet Union absolutely forbid the counterboring or of a muzzle past four and a half centimeters. So once it got past four and a half centimeters, basically the barrel would be removed from the rifle and then it could be rebarreled or the rest of the gun could be used for spare parts but four and a half centimeters is just you know it's really not that much compared to some of the stuff you see in finland like this rifle so here's a rifle and if you if you just said it was a finnish mosin a lot of people would say well this is a high quality mosin Except for the fact that if you showed this to the main artillery director of the Soviet Union in World War II, they would have said, oh, I fail this. No, get this out of here. I send you to Gulag, my friend. Uh, so why is that? Well, again, it goes back to Finland used what they had, and some of the stuff they had was really good. Some of the stuff they had was um, serviceable. Let's call it this. This rifle is serviceable. Uh, I've even seen rifles that are even more counterboard than this. Again, if 
from Finland. So there's a big exception to this rule. When you look at a Finnish Mosin, and like for an, an M91 like this, for example, a Mosin that Finland did not build this, but they acquired this somehow, you have no idea what you are going to get. Uh, you know, you might get a really fancy stock. This one has some cracks in it. Uh, you might get one that's uber counterboard. You might get one that has a lot of pitting. Uh, also, this guy has a ton of pitting here. It's kind of hard to see on the side of the receiver. It looks really horrible. Uh, you also might get like a 10 pound trigger. Uh... Yeah, and also this gun's pretty heavy. I mean, I would not want to have to lug this thing around, but again, about about half of all Finnish Mosins are M91s, it seems. At least that's what it appears that we know off of their records. Uh, now, some of these were rebuilt, and Finland did make some brand new M91s with new Finnish barrels. Those tend to be nicer than these. You don't really see those being counterboard by like six centimeters. Or anything like that but again they don't always have the nicest triggers so where does this misconception come from that Finnish Mosins are the best Mosins well generally speaking there are a lot of guns just like this one that have been modified by Finland and when you hold them and shoot them it's a lot nicer uh, now, this one does have a nice two-piece spliced stock right here. This is a big improvement because the one pieces tended to crack and also warp a lot up here. And this is a nice improvement. So a lot of them will have things like this, but past that, you may not really know what you're getting. In fact, a lot of them still have the old one-piece stock that can, in fact, be warped. Uh, but, you know, there are still a lot of nice ones that'll have nice triggers but there are a lot of exceptions. So you take uh, the, the fact that still a relatively uh, decent percentage of Finnish Mosins are, are guns like this, but nicer than this. Certainly nicer than, say, your refurbished 9130 rifle. And you couple that with things like the Finnish M39, the M27, the M28, the M2830, the M24, and all those rifles tend to be generally speaking again a lot nicer than your average m91 like this one and because there's so many of those variants and they are relatively common here in the u.s not because there's a ton of them but because a large portion of the amount that actually still existed in finland after world war ii was shipped to america and canada so even though they didn't make that many of them in the grand scheme of mosins um, a large majority of them are actually in America so you can still get them uh, so there's a lot of them floating around and so people say oh Finnish Mosins Finnish Mosins this Finnish Mosin that we have we've kind of developed these misconceptions or ideas or stereotypes about what a Finnish Mosin is and what it isn't but again just to throw out Finnish Mosin you have absolutely no idea what you're getting you have to look further into the gun so if you look at say a listing for, say, for a Mosin for sale, it says Finnish Mosin. Eh. All that really tells you is it was used by Finland. That doesn't really tell you the quality of the gun. doesn't tell you what kind of trigger it's going to have. Uh, it doesn't even tell you if it's going to have a nice bore. Then a lot of Finnish Mosins I've seen have pretty... Eh, not, not the greatest bores in the world, but it was enough to get by. Uh, in fact, I've seen a lot of refurbished 9130 rifles that can be a lot nicer than a lot of Finnish Mosins I've seen. Mm. So take, take with that what you want to. Okay, so what have we learned here today? Well, for one thing, we don't really know what it means when you have a Finnish Mosin in terms of quality. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the earlier M91s we looked at here on the channel... Uh, that was also from Finland, had all of these crazy stock repairs. And you look at that and you realize, man, for them to keep trying to repair this stock, they must have been really desperate. And I like that gun because it does help illustrate that, in fact, they were desperate. You know, from 1939 to all the way up to 1944 was a pretty not good time to be in Finland land. 
Uh, it was basically just fighting for survival, uh, trying to keep your country from being overrun by somebody you don't want it to. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of these were just not good, and a lot of them were, were really, really good. So, it's a huge mixed bag when we talk about Finnish Mosins. So, when y'all ask me what is a Finnish Mosin, it's a Mosin used by Finland. When y'all ask me, is a, is a Finnish Mosin higher quality, uh, the answer is, I don't really know. <laughs> Show me a Finnish Mosin, and then I can help you uh, kind of decipher if it's higher quality or not. But again, you really have to look at the gun. Uh, just because you know the model or the year of the gun or the fact that it's SA stamped, which means it was used by Finland, that doesn't really tell you that much. Okay. But these are still really cool rifles nonetheless. And another interesting kind of segue that this topic boils down to is, well, are Finnish Mosins more collectible? Hmm. Sounds like maybe it would be a topic for another video. So thank you guys for watching. <clears throat> Hopefully we are able to clear up some interesting misconceptions about Finnish Mosins and what they are, what they could be, and what they're not always. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell if you guys like more Mosin to content just like this. Let me know if y'all have any prayer requests, and we'll see you next time.